We're here at the TechCrunch Disrupt here with uh, Riftcat and who are you? I'm Marek, I'm CEO of Riftcat and we do virtual reality uh, on we do PC virtual reality on Google Cardboards. And who are you? I'm Machi, I'm the business development for Riftcat. So you're a startup, right? Yeah, exactly, we're a startup and we're doing pretty well and we're here to show you what's, uh, what do we have. So basically, I enable USB tethering. So you do a USB connection? Yeah, I do. US um, USB host uh, connection? On yeah, the uh, it's uh, connected to the PC, but I can do it as well as uh, through Wi-Fi. But uh, it's very crowded here, I mean Wi-Fi, there's a lot of Wi-Fi here, so it's going to be glitchy. But I don't so want you have that. a special app running on Windows? Exactly, on Windows and on Android. And, and now when I activated USB, I can see the connection, but I can uh, choose the Wi-Fi as well. That's cool. Yeah, so you so can go, you can go connect you USB tether and untether. Yeah, tether untether. Yeah, yeah, exactly. USB cable is just more stable. And is it direct USB or over the hotspot? Uh, over uh, over a Wi-Fi. Yeah, over a Wi-Fi. Wi yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, But you can do ad hoc connection as well. It's, okay. It, it doesn't matter really. And then I choose the USB connection, and we have a, a wait a second, and it's connected. Okay. And now everything is ready. I just press uh, in the Windows. I just press place the play, play press play Steam VR games. So and now you're uh, gonna play Stream VR, yeah. which is only for uh, HTC Vive. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and Oculus, Oculus. Yeah, and Oculus Rift. And which, which is uh, seven hundred dollars. Exactly. And, and you're gonna play on any phone with a with a yeah, two any dollar Android. cardboard. Exactly. Exactly. It's not normally. It's not available in the uh, in the. Uh, it's not available in the Google Cardboard, yeah. but uh, when we use our software and we press Play Steam VR, it starts to think that this is uh, an HTC Vive connected. It's going to glitch for uh, several seconds, but it's going to stabilize for a second. Okay, and here it is. Look, I can turn around and I'm going to launch Steam, uh, Steam VR game Project Cars, which is made by an Italian company. Play in VR. Play in VR, yeah, it's just a typical, this is a uh, typical routine that HTC Vive user is having. And we launched the game and now it shows up. But uh, it's going to be full 3D, it's just the menu yeah. in, uh, in the game. This is how it looks in HTC Vive as well. PC games take a long time to load, no? Yeah, it's of course. To do with your system. Yeah, of course. It's, it's, uh, we, are not, uh, we are not using any computing resources on the, uh, on the uh, computer. You're not emulating, you're not... Uh, nope. trans you're transcoding something, you're grabbing the image. Yeah, we are taking the video and we are using the video decoding modules, which does not affect the performance of the game. So basically, I can choose the... Um, I can choose the the game, the, the, for example, I don't know the track or something in the game. But I can any ga play any game. I can play Minecraft. I can play Subnautica. I can play Euro Truck Simulator 2, uh, Windlands. Um, Whenever the game is yeah. made for Oculus or for HTC Vive, it will play. Okay, Everything. that's it. That's it. It looks. It works. So is the quality as good as in HTC Vive? Not well. It's obvious that yeah. Because you can have a, a 2K display. Yeah, you can, but of course, it's um, HTC Vive is uh, you know 600 euro worth of equipment. You can have a 4K Sony but phone, yeah. and it's better than no, it's not. Okay, so what's the difference? The difference is this costs. It's for free. Our app is for free, uh, but uh, it's the free version is for free. But uh, for 15 how, euro, how do you drive? Uh, in the we are using the PAL, the you gamepad. Play? Yeah. So basically, look at the responsiveness. I mean, I'm turning around and it turns around uh, instantly. Yeah. It doesn't, uh, there is no lag, there is no delay. I can do, well, basically I can play uh, like in normal HTC Vive. And the difference, of course there will be difference. It depends on the phone, it depends on the headset. You can. You don't have the trackers and the IR trackers in the room. Yeah. Can you add this? Uh, yes, the, there are options for it as a, do it yourself. Uh, do, do it yourself. Equipment People you can use uh, PSIs with PS moves. Yeah. To track. They are yeah. using leap motion, motion. device as well. <laughs> so Wii, Wii Wii our users, our Wii, users uh, are creative. Yeah, I mean, the Wii, probably, the Wii yeah. modes can be used as well. So basically, it's um, a little bit like a do you uh, do it yourself virtual reality. Yeah. A little bit of but, hacking uh, and looking on the internet, you can do most everything with yeah. it. But there is still plenty of games that does not require hand tracking to play, like the Project Cars, for example. Uh, and um, it's really great entry point for PC VR because instead of investing 600 euro uh, upfront, you can just uh, try it with our application. You have your phone and buy 
uh, five euro uh, headset. Two euro. Yeah. Two euro. Yeah. You give so, it for free, right? Uh, yeah. Some other companies do. Yeah. How about exactly. that? This is DaVinci VR headset made by Polish company. It's very comfortable. It's one of the best cardboards I've ever used. Uh, you can try it out. Polish? Uh, it's a Polish company, DaVinci VR. They're, and they sell it for five euros? Uh, something about that. I don't remember the How exact How do they make price. money, all these people? How do they make money? And how do you make money? Uh, we make money. Because it's free. Yeah, it's free, but it's, it's a free version. But uh, it's limited. The free version is limited to 10 minutes of gameplay. Every time. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, but... But... but but after the 10 minutes, you can restart the game again. Yeah. Ah. It just but disconnects every. After 10 minutes, it just disconnects. But you can start as many sessions as you want. What if you want to play 12 minutes? How much you pay? 15 euros. 15. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, well, it's so okay. It's, it's, not it's, it's, it's cheaper than. Uh, it's, it's not even close to the to the price of a, of an HTC Vive or an Oculus Rift. So basically, for uh, around 50 dollars, uh, you get a risk-free uh, VR experience. Yeah. Risk-free. Yeah, because if you don't like it, if you don't like it, for, if you don't like it for ten minutes, you're not gonna like it for fifteen euros. Actually, most VR games after ten minutes, you're kind of tired of it, no? I'm yeah, talking. It depends. It depends. It depends on the game, of course. Uh, How about it, uh, uh, since when are you launched? Are you already? We launched in March 2016. There was a beta version, uh, and in June 2016 we launched with early access, when the the app became paid uh, paid one. So. How many users? Uh, we are reaching 100,000 registered users. 100,000? Yeah, right? people really like our software. It's very and nice. Where are, you, where are you based? We are based in Poland. Poland. And uh, how many hackers in your team? Um, uh, like real hackers too, just two. two. Yeah. And the other hackers are just like not real hackers? Uh, no, no, we have a department which makes games. Uh, I'm also coding, but I'm coding mostly front-end and all that kind of stuff. But I'm uh, now shifting to a CEO role. Um, we have uh, Kasia, which is a designer, but she's also a founder. And uh, we have plenty of people working remotely with us. So. Is it a lot of cash? Uh, I mean, uh, successful? Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we are not uh, pressured to gain, uh, to raise another round of, uh, of funding. So, so what are you doing here? Uh, we are seeking publicity. publicity. Publicity, you want to show our product? Yeah, we are seeking publicity because this is, this is a really good product and people really like it. And. Uh, the only thing that's left is to show people that such a product exists. That's that's what we do. So what I'd like you to do for like 15 euros more is put some uh, IR tracker and beamer in a room, so you have the whole complete package. Yeah, but you can do it. Uh, well, you can do it yourself. We as a software so we company, we give you a software yeah. that you can build on and you can expand yourself in yeah. your home. But every successful software company has to sell hardware, also, no? Uh, not always. We feel no? that if we if we try to split into three different uh, the products. Nothing's going to be good. Here we concentrate on one thing, and we let our users expand on whatever they want. Is there any chance that the Oculus or, or um, HTC is going to block you? No. Steam VR, uh, Steam so sent us an HTC Vive for free because they liked our product, and then later on they uh, accidentally, they the yeah, they accent accidentally uh, broke our driver, so our software didn't work. So they, we, we t told them and they released a patch in 24 hours for their live Steam servers. Uh, they released a patch and there's a, there a patch notes saying uh, fixed RiftCat driver to work with the latest Steam VR driver. So basically they're ca taking care for, well, they're caring we're about We're doing us. promotion for them because yeah. not everybody's going to buy an HTC Vive off the rack. And for them, it's easier to support us because people get the idea of VR. They buy the games anyways. Yeah. So and later on, they will buy HTC Vive anyway. And another thing is that entire VR industry is now fighting to, to get mainstream attention. So basically, anyone who can uh, bring the PC VR uh, to the people and make it more available is uh, well is, is welcome. So. HTC Vive is great, but you yeah. have 100,000 users. You're already bigger than HTC Vive. Yeah, it's, but well, it's, it's easier to gain registered users for the software than getting, uh, getting people to buy, to buy 600 euro uh, device. It's, it's just easier. <laughs> so. Do you consider other business model, maybe um, provide the software fully functional for free, but make money some well, other um, We are yeah. actually working right now with a couple of uh, headset manufacturers to uh, be able to deliver our product with their headset, so as a bundle deal. 
So whenever you would buy a specific headset, you would get the software for free it will include it with nice. the price of the headset. Also, several manufacturers are interested in pre-installing our application in our uh, in, in their headset. Nice. Because they have a headset that is still Android based, but it has built-in Android built device. In. So. Nice. And uh, it could be an all-in-one VR headset. Yeah, yeah. exactly. The only one VR headset. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly, and then we're working with them to include the product with their product. So whenever you get a headset and an old one headset, you would have an experience out of the box. Nice. What's next? Otherwise, what else do you have to do? Well, we what we want to do is because we uh, we reached the point where we are comfortable, but our next challenge is to scale this up to make this like to make a big impact and become a uh, instead of becoming a, a, a good lifestyle business to become a a huge company. So we have to. Gr create growth now and uh, maybe someday partner with Google for example uh, who would be interested in applying such technology in daydream platform so we are we are planning short term but we have a vision for the long term as well does your app not work with the daydream apis and everything no no it works but uh, it's just uh, you know google is a big player so maybe they would be interested to like uh, make it uh, integrated into Daydream platform, or maybe pre-install it with every Android. And, and how, how smooth is it over Wi-Fi? Is it very, very good? It's similar to it's similar to the USB connection. No lag, no issue. No, it, of course it depends. If you're getting crowded network, then it starts to get laggy. But then you could connect USB. At home, public it's no network. Problem. You're not gonna yeah. play it. Your it's public a, networks it's, are it's overcharged. It's working the best over five gigahertz Wi-Fi network. Uh, Two point four gigahertz network can be choppy. But it's it's more compressed than Wi-Fi, right? Uh, you compress. The you you choose this. Uh, you can uh, choose the settings in RiftCut at which bitrate you want to send it. So nice. basically, the the higher settings you set up, the uh, the better visual fidelity you will see. But also, if you get too much, then your phone might not be able to decode uh, that nice. much. Uh, data. Maybe somebody can connect a USB Type C dongle that does uh, 60 gigahertz or something faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, this is that's, this right. is that's why we like possible. to work with people out there because people get crazy ideas and they do them for us. Yeah, exactly. we don't need. We need to deliver a good piece of software, and people will make the hardware for it. Like I said, we have. I've seen a setup with um, with uh, three P, uh, PSIs and three PS moves within the room, and he did a room setup with just a couple of controllers. Yeah. Nice. Our community is amazing, and we love them. They, we are trying to be very close with them. We are. Uh, also, we are featuring featuring their creations a lot. We want to be close with them, and we are always always honest with them about the development, what's going to happen, what we do, why we didn't release something in the in the patch or something. We are always communicating because we want to be close with those people because they love VR the same way as we do. Is it in a forum? Uh, we are communicating with them through social media. Uh, like Facebook, Twitter, and etc. Et we also communicate with them through Reddit. Uh, we also uh, we also have our own development blog where we describe the patches and they comment. They send us email. We have an active help desk in which we are leaving no one without response. Uh, usually we respond uh, within 24 hours and we can help you with setting everything up and all that kind of stuff. Nice. Maybe the next step also you can stream the games over the cloud. Is that too hard? Well, well, yeah. You don't need to have a Windows PC anymore. Oh, yeah. It's too hard, but then right? there's, but yeah, it's, it's not that it's hard, it's, it's a limitation of the network. All right. I guess, well, we, we thought about it, but the, the limitation is not only the network, but the speed of light. Uh, because moving the, the, like moving the signal from, the, uh, from Berlin to, for example, uh, Minsk in Belarus, uh, it will take some time, and this delay we, we cannot do do anything about it because it's basically um, it's basically uh, it's that, that, yeah that's <laughs> physics. It's physics. Right. That's the first problem. The second problem is uh, streaming such video is a huge amount of data. So uh, so cloud servers would cost a lot to stream this over the, the internet. A good bitrate for this. Uh, 15, 20 meg uh, megabits per second. So that's that's kind of a lot, and doing this in real time, it's not feasible feasible business-wise because no one would pay that much money for it to to. Maybe to, to you work. partner with ISP, like yeah, uh, well still, VT, Virtual yeah, Media. Yeah, and maybe. I mean, this is something we can consider, but not now. It's just it, it's something for, for the now future. We want to deliver a good user experience to the yeah. users, all right? So they can play their games on their phones. Right? But there's plenty plenty of possible uh, possible directions that this technology can go. 
and uh, well, we we are up for opportunities, and um, and we have plans. We have a lot of plans for this. So uh, stay tuned and watch our development on blog.rivcat.com, and uh, you will see how we do, how we work, and and how it's all.